Welcome, brothers and sisters. It is a beautiful day to study the Word of God, and you are here by God's divine timing. Before we rush into our study for today, allow me to summarize our last lesson. We were looking at meal and first fruits offerings. Israel was specially warned of no burning of leaven and honey, along with the meal offerings. We then understood that leaven is always evil when used in Scripture, and honey can represent natural sweetness which sours gradually. Both of these represent something and turn out to be the opposite later. Instead, salt, a token of faithfulness, was to be the final ingredient in all the meal offerings. We then look again at the meal offering, which speaks of the communion and fellowship of believers with God, the Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Next was the peace offering, through which a sinner comes to God through Jesus' sacrifice. The cross reestablishes the communion and peace with God. In all the offerings discussed so far, no single offering can set forth the manifold wonders of the person of Christ and the many facets of His glory. With that recap as our background, welcome again, brothers and sisters, to yet another episode of Through the Bible. Greetings, dear friend. It's once again a wonderful privilege to study the Word of God together. Leviticus chapter 3 and verse 6. And if his offering for a sacrifice of peace Offering unto the Lord be of the flock, male or female, he shall offer it without blemish. Verse 7. If he offer a lamb for his offering, then shall he offer it before the Lord. The lamb sets forth in a peculiar way the character of Christ and is therefore unusually appropriate as a sacrifice in the peace offering. By contrast, the bullock or the heifer from the herd sets forth the servant side of our Lord's ministry. The bullock was a domesticated animal used to bear burdens and to plough fields and so represented transportation and commerce in that day. The bullock was a servant and a friend of man. The bullock represents Christ as a servant. This is the aspect of Christ's ministry which is set forth in the Gospel of Mark. We need to emphasize that Christ as a servant was not a bellboy or a shoeshiner for man. He did not run at man's bidding. Notice the Gospel of Mark sets him forth as God's servant. He came to do the will of God. However, the Lamb sets forth Christ in his complete identification with man in life and in death. Have you ever noticed that? At the beginning of his ministry, John the Baptist pointed out the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. This is John 1.29. That referred to his work. Later he said, Behold the Lamb of God. John 1.36. Referring to his person. From the beginning, the Lamb has set forth his quality and ability to take the place of man in bearing the sin of the world. The very first offering made by Abel was the sacrifice of a lamb. I think that God clothed Adam and Eve with lamb skins. Well, we can't prove that, but I believe it in view of the fact that Abel brought a lamb to be offered. Isaiah 53 makes it very clear that Jesus Christ was our substitute, carrying our sins and iniquities. In verse 7 of Isaiah 53, it says, He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he open not his mouth. He is pictured as a lamb. The lamb becomes our substitute. He is also called a lamb in his resurrection. In chapter 5, verse 6 of Revelation, it says, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. Again, he is a lamb in his return in glory. In chapter 6 of Revelation, verses 16 to 17, And said to the mountains and rocks, 
Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? The Lamb is probably the most complete representation of Christ of all the sacrifices. Now let's move on to Leviticus chapter 3, verses 8 to 10. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of his offering, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And Aaron's sons shall sprinkle the blood thereof round about upon the altar. And he shall offer of the sacrifice of the peace offering an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fat thereof, and the whole rump. It shall he take off hard by the backbone, and the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the call above the liver. With the kidneys it shall he take away. The ritual is similar to that given concerning one of the herd. The fat was God's portion. It was considered the better part of the animal. A fat animal was the best type, and the best was offered to God. There are many passages to illustrate that fat was considered the best. Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, in Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. And then in Isaiah 25 verse 6 it says, And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees well refined. In Luke 15 verse 23, And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. Today, those of us who need to reduce our weight try not to eat the fat, but it is obvious that the fat was considered the choicest part. God precisely declared, All the fat that is upon the inwards and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them was to be for him. God demanded the best. We see here the deep and full meaning of the peace offering. Fellowship with God rests upon the blood of Christ. It is true. But there is another aspect of this fellowship. To make it complete and final, there must be the presentation of the life of the believer in total dedication. Both of these aspects are included by Jesus Christ in his wonderful, inclusive invitation. It says in Matthew 11, verse 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is a rest that he gives which is typified by the shed blood. This is the rest of redemption. Matthew 11 verses 29 to 30 says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is a rest that we find which is represented by the fat. We must come to him and offer ourselves to him. This is the rest of dedication. Now the expression, the whole rump, is translated in the American Standard Version of 1901 as the fat tail entire. This has reference to a special breed of sheep peculiar to the geographical area. The tail of this breed weighs as much as 15 pounds and is very fatty. Leviticus 3 verse 11 And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now this is a strange clause and some have tried to associate it with uh, pagan offerings. We know from an Assyrian inscription of Esar Hadan that offerers sacrificed victims to the gods and then feasted with the gods. However, in the peace offering the very opposite is true. God feasts the offerer. God makes this very clear in Deuteronomy chapter 12, verses 6 to 7. And thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, and your sacrifices, and your tithes, and heave offerings of your hand, and your vows, and your freewill offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks. And there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your household, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. The fat was totally consumed, but the priest received the breast and the shoulder. 
the offerer ate the remainder and he did it in God's house. God was the host and the offerer, the sinner, was the guest. Other faiths have it backwards. And that was the basis of Isaiah's charge against Israel when they went into the worship of images. It says in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11, But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Another version, the ASV says, American Standard Version says, that prepare a table for fortune, that fill up mingled wine unto destiny. God provides the table in the peace offering. Now this throws light upon many verses of scripture. Verse 5 of Psalm 23, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Psalm 36 verse 8 it says, They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Then John chapter 6 verse 51 to 57, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. Take eat, this is my body. Matthew 26 verse 26. The Lord prepares the table of salvation and fellowship. I hope you are able to digest this fact. This is emphasized in the peace offering. This helps us to understand the parable of the prodigal son. It is the father who kills the fatted calf when the son is restored to fellowship. In the parable of the great supper, it is the Lord who invites, Come, for all things are now ready. Luke 14 verse 17 this is the table of salvation which God has provided. And then read 1 John chapter 1 again and again. Fellowship with God rests upon the redemption of Christ through his blood and upon our knowing Christ and confessing our sins. First, we accept God's salvation by accepting Jesus Christ as our Savior. Then we come to the table of fellowship. Modern man thinks he can provide a table of salvation of his own works and then ask God to come and join him, to invite God to come and eat. My friend, that is purely a worldly or selfish way of looking at things. God provides the table of salvation. God provides the table of fellowship. A sacrifice from the goats. This is verse 12 of Leviticus chapter 3. And if his offering be a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. This is the third and final type of sacrifice for the peace offering. All three types of sacrifice are essential to portray the different aspects of Christ in the peace offerings. The goat represents the complete identification of Christ as adequate to take away the sin of man. He was made sin for us. That is not just a nice statement, but an actual fact. He is the propitiation for our sins, which means that He adequately and totally paid the penalty for our sins. You hear the expression, I don't want anyone to make a goat of me. Well, friends, Christ was willing to be made a goat for you. He took the full penalty of your sin and my sin. His offering for sin is clearly set forth in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 6 to 14. The ritual of it follows the pattern of the offering of the herd and of the flock that we studied earlier on. Now let's read verses 13 to 17 of Leviticus chapter 3. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire, unto the Lord, the fat that covereth the inwards, and all the fat that is upon the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the caul above the liver, with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar, it is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savour, 
all the fat is the Lord's. It shall be a perpetual statue for your generations throughout all your dwellings, that ye eat neither fat nor blood. There are two statements here that should detain us for a moment. All the fat is the Lord's, and that ye eat neither fat nor blood. These two prohibitions are indeed striking. They are amplified in the law of the peace offerings in chapter 7. The reason for the prohibition of eating blood is stated in Leviticus chapter 17 verses 10 to 14. And we will go into that later on in our study. The reason for the prohibition of eating the fat is given here. The fat is the Lord's. Man was reminded that he was redeemed by blood. That is the basis and ground for our acceptance before God. That brings us to the table of communion and fellowship with God. But the fat is the Lord's. He demands the best. If we are to enjoy to the fullest our fellowship with Him, it is imperative that we give Him our best. There must be a total dedication to Him. Loving sacrifice of our lives must follow our redemption in order to enter into His sweet peace of communion. This is the message of Romans chapter 12, John 15, 14 and Philippians chapter 3 verses 10 to 14. Salvation is by the blood. Sanctification and service are by the fat. The law of the peace offering. The law of the peace offering is given in Leviticus chapter 7 verses 11 to 38. It is the most extensive of all the instructions of the five offerings and it is the last. The value of the other offerings must be entered into before we can enjoy the peace of God. We will go into more detail in chapter 7. Suffice it to say here that Aaron and his sons, the priests, received as their portion of the peace offering the breast and the shoulder. Now the breast speaks of the love of Christ for us and the shoulder speaks of the power and strength of Christ. He is able to save to the uttermost. This is our portion in Christ. Do you hear him, dear listener? Do you hear him in his peace offering? Well, we have few more minutes and let's just focus on the introduction of chapter 4 where it talks about the sin offering. Now, this is the first of the non-sweet savor offerings. The three sweet savor offerings set forth the person of Christ in all of his glorious character. The two non-sweet offerings set forth the work of Christ on the cross for sin. The sin offering speaks of sin as a nature. The trespass offering speaks of sin as an act. You see, man is a sinner by nature, and he is a sinner because of what he does. He does what he does because he is a sinner by nature. Now, several f striking features of the sin offering set it apart from the other offerings and distinguish its importance. First, it's the longest account of any offering since it is twice as long as any of the other four. The burnt offering was 17 verses, the meal offering 16 verses, the peace offering 17 verses, the trespass offering 19 verses, the sin offering 35 verses. Evidently, the Spirit of God thought this was very important. Secondly, the sin offering was an entirely new offering. Up to this time, there is no record anywhere of a sin offering. There is no previous record of it occurring in Scripture. No other nation had anything that was even similar to it. Thirdly, from the time of the giving of the law, it became the most important and significant offering. You see, man was a sinner before the giving of the law. But actually, it was the law which revealed to him that he was a sinner. The sin offering was offered during all of the feasts, Passover, Pentecost, trumpets and tabernacles. It was offered on the great day of atonement, Yom Kippur. It brought the high priest into the Holy of Holies. Fourthly, it is in contrast to the burnt sacrifice, although it was made in the same place, it says in Leviticus chapter 6 verse 25, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. 
in the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. Where the burnt offering leaves off, the sin offering begins. The burnt offering tells who Christ is. The sin offering tells what Christ did. In the burnt offerings, Christ meets the demands of God's high and holy standard. In the sin offering, Christ meets the deep and desperate needs of man. In the burnt offering, we see the preciousness of Christ. In the sin offering, we see the hatefulness of sin. The burnt offering was a voluntary offering. The sin offering was commanded. The burnt offering ascended. The sin offering was poured out. The one went up, the other went down. Well, dear friend, I hope you are able to grasp this, the differences and the comparisons. We will be studying this even further in our next study. Amen. Peace with God. Peace with God, so far as we discussed, is as costly as sin, brothers and sisters. The tabernacle, the number of sacrifices, the number of animals involved, the priests and all the regulations they have to observe without angering God. The ordeal is simply overwhelming. No poverty was an excuse and ignorance was not an excuse. Similarly, the price of sin cost the life of Jesus, the only Son of God. Sin was to be atoned for, even if it had to cost the Son of God. Today, dear beloved, do we value the peace of God? Do we value the blood of His Son, Jesus? Do we value the fellowship of the Holy Spirit? A little different way of asking can be, if Jesus had not given you hope, will you not be afraid of dying and the eternal condemnation therefrom? As we live a grateful heart, may we continue to spread the love of Jesus. Music